Hello everyone, this is Alex Cordobard, and in this tutorial we're going to be learning the basics of animation. Animation is the movement of your objects or other things in your 3D scene. So let's get started. There are different ways to animate in Blender. One of those ways is to animate an object directly. Another way is to use something called an armature, which is kind of like bones and would be used for something like a human. Yet another way is to animate the values of something, such as the brightness or darkness of a lamp. Now before we learn the basics of animating, I'm going to declutter the space by hitting T to close that window, and also bringing this and minimizing that a little bit. Now if you remember in the first tutorial, we talked a little bit about the timeline. And the timeline basically shows you the time and movement of your 3D scene. So we're going to be using this to help us with our animation. Now an animation is basically a lot of images put together and then flipped through really fast to give the illusion that it's moving. So if you go down here, you can see starting frame 1, end frame 250. So this is the length of your animation. It's going to be 250 still images that are then put together to create an animation. Right here, this next number is the current frame that you're on. If I move this, you can see this number changing and it's also right here. So let's go to frame one by clicking here and typing one. And now to insert a keyframe or to mark where the cube is, what you do is hit the I key and then you're giving you're given an insert keyframe menu with the location rotation the scaling you can select the location and the rotation for the location and scale or all three of them location rotation and scale so what these do is it tells blender that on frame one it has this location or this rotation etc so we're going to tell blender that on frame one the cube has this location rotation and scale and then right here on the timeline you can see that it inserted a yellow line that helps to see that there's a keyframe right there now if i open this back up you can see that the same start and end frame is right here. And also another important thing is the frames per second. Right now it's at 24 frames per second. That means that in the span of 24 frames, it will have been one second of animation. So let's go to frame 24 and grab our cube with G. I'm going to go into top view. Let's grab our cube and move it somewhere. Then hit I, location, rotation, scale. And now if you left click and drag on your timeline and scroll through it, you will see that the cube has been animated one second from here all the way to here. To play our animation, just go down here and click the rewind button and then the play button. You will see that the animation plays, but right now nothing is happening. That's because we don't have any keyframes inserted along the timeline right here. Hitting pause, if we go right here to the end frame and type in 24 and then play it, you will see that our animation loops because 24 frames is the amount of animation that we have total. Now Alt A is the shortcut key for playing and pausing your animation. And now putting this back to 250 frames, we're going to add a couple more keyframes. The I key is great to insert keyframes, but it gets a little bit annoying when you're adding a lot and you have to always hit I and then select one of these. Another great way of adding keyframes without doing much is going down here and selecting this red recording icon which is the automatic keyframe insertion. If I select this and then go forward a couple of frames and then grab my cube 
and move it, you will see that it automatically adds a keyframe. And if I hit Alt A to play it, you can see that this is in real time and I can move around the scene as my animation plays. Now if I go forward a couple more frames, I can also grab it, rotate and scale it. And you will see that once again it adds a keyframe and it's also rotated and scaled the cube accordingly. Now if I want to hold a position, say for example this one, all I have to do is go forward a couple frames and then hit the I key and insert the location rotation scale and you will see that this keyframe and this one are exactly the same so it will stay in that position and then if I go forward again and move it you can see exactly what happens now if you don't like one of your keyframes that you've added all you have to do is go on top of one of them or go to the frame that that keyframe is inserted on. You can tell if you're on the correct frame by looking at this number right here and if there is a keyframe on that frame it will be orange. If you're not then it will be white. So go on the keyframe that you don't like and then instead of I just hit Alt I and you can delete keyframe. Although automatic keyframe insertion is very useful when you're animating something, keep in mind that if you grab another object and have the automatic keyframe insertion on and you move that object, that it will add a keyframe to it when you don't necessarily want to. So whenever you go to another object that's not meant to be animated, make sure that you turn it off and then move it. We could animate our camera the same way that we did with our cube. If I grab it and move it out, then turn back on automatic keyframe insertion, go to frame 1, and then hit I and mark the location rotation scale, and move forward a couple frames. Grab the camera and bring it in. You will see that a keyframe was added. And now if I go back to the beginning, hit 0 on my numpad to go into camera view and then alt a you can see that both the cube and the camera are now animated let's look at how to animate values and things like that first I'm gonna turn off the automatic keyframe insertion and then select my cube and change it to cycles render going to the materials tab I'm going to click use nodes and now with my mouse hovered over the color, I'm going to hit I, and you could see that a keyframe was added by the yellow contour around the color. Now if you do an animation, you have to animate this color because this is the render color, but for now I'm just going to be using the viewport color so that you could see what's happening. Going to frame 1, I'm going to add a keyframe by hitting I over the viewport color. Then moving up, changing the color, and once again hitting the I key. And you can see now that the cube changes from a white color to a red. You can do the same thing with the roughness value by hitting I and moving along your timeline. And you can see if you move the value up. You can see that the value now changes with the animation. Another thing you can do is with the lamp or anything like that, if I click on use nodes, hit I for the strength of the light, move up on the timeline and click on automatic keyframe insertion. You can see that the automatic keyframe insertion works just the same as with the cube and that value is now animated. Turning this back off, one last thing that's important to know is how to make your cube or object visible or not visible. So to do that, going to the outliner right here, you can see that the cube is selected and these two icons right here is this one is to make it visible or not visible and this is to make it render or not rendered. So if I go to frame 1, 
and hover my mouse over these two icons and hit I to mark them. Then move forward a couple frames, deselect them to make it not visible and not rendered, and then hit I to mark those keyframes. You can see that my cube is visible, and then it goes to not being visible and not rendered. And then you can make it go back to being rendered and visible by selecting those again and inserting a keyframe. Now we're going to look at the very, very basics of how to animate with an armature because this one goes much more in depth and I'll cover that in another tutorial, but for now we're just going to look at the basics. Selecting the cube, I'm going to delete that and then hit Shift A and add a new cube. Now I'm going to hit S and Y to scale it up. And now hitting Tab to go into edit mode. With everything selected, I'm going to hit W and subdivide for around four times to something like this. Going back to object mode and to top view by hitting 7 on the numpad. Now I'm going to hit Shift A and instead of a mesh, we're going to go down here to armature and single bone. If I hit Z, on my keyboard to go into wireframe you can see that it's added a bone right here and one other tip really fast is if you're rotating not around if you're not rotating around the selected object and it's kind of rotating weirdly just hit the delete key or the period key on your numpad and it will zoom in to the object and have the orientation around that object now going back to solid view or object mode by hitting Z, I'm going to have the bone selected and go over here to the armature panel and click on x-ray so that we could see the bone through our mesh. In side view with 3 on the numpad, I'm going to hit R and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees and then bring it along the y axis to the beginning of the cube. Now hitting tab to go into edit mode, I'm going to hit E to extrude and then Y to extrude it on the Y axis and you can see that it adds another bone. Now I'm going to do that one more time. And then for the last ones instead of extruding them one by one I'm just going to hit E to extrude, bring it all the way out, select it and hit W, subdivide, and once more. Now, if I hit tab to go back to object mode, and go down here, and change it from object mode or edit mode, which we were previously in, and go to pose mode, which is the mode that you use to animate armatures, you can see that they turn blue. And if you select one of them, you can rotate them and the others follow, kind of like a bone. To make it deform the cube, what you need to do is either in pose mode or object mode, select the cube or the object that needs to be deformed by these bones, and then shift right click on your armature, and hit control P, and then under armature deform, select with automatic weights. And now if you select your bone and go back to pose mode, you can see that if I select a bone and rotate it, it will deform the cube accordingly. And if I select the cube and go from object mode to weight paint, you can see that if I select one of the bones that there is different colors on it. These colors determine how much the bone influences the cube. It goes from blue, that has no influence at all, to red, which means it has 100% influence on that part of the cube. So right here you can see that it influences the cube by rotating it. And if I hit the T key, you can see right here that I have options to add or subtract. So if I click on subtract and put the strength all the way up, I can remove this influence right here 
by just left clicking and dragging on it. And now, once I got it all removed, if I go back and rotate it, you will see that it has no more influence over the cube. And just like subtracting it, I can add it back. Let me put the strength up and the radius. Now, this way is good if you need to do little details and fix some stuff, but with automatic weights, usually adds it pretty good to where it's animatable. So I suggest first using automatic weights and then using this method to clean up your mesh or clean up what it's deforming. So this is the very basics of how to use the armature. It's a uh, very com well it's not complicated but it might be overwhelming at first but I'll go over it more in other tutorials and just a quick thing on how to animate them it's exactly the same as with the cube if I go to frame 1 in pose mode make sure you're in pose mode though select an armature hit I location rotation scale go to another one another frame and rotate it and mark that and then you could go even to another one and rotate that. You can see that now those bones are animated. And the reason that this one is not moving is because in frame one, I forgot to give it the position of this. So going back to frame one, I will give it this position. And now you can see that it moves. So this is the very basics of using armatures. They're very useful for character animations. Later on, I will do an in-depth tutorial on how to put an armature on a human person and animate them and rig them properly. So look for that tutorial later on. And for now, I hope this tutorial has helped you. If you have any questions or anything, send me a message or leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one.